If you've been following the news, you know there's a lot of talk right now about the DOJ, FBI raids, people going to prison. Uh, this next guest, kind of an expert on prison because he's been married over 40 years. Uh, your <laughs> former attorney general, Bill Barr, back in studio, a free man at the moment. Good to see you. Good to see you, Jimmy. Now Thanks that, for having me. That was not a cheap shot at the misses. Uh, 49 years. Is it, 49. You're at 49 yeah. right now. Yeah. Me and Jenny are at 16, which is 13 years longer than either of us bet in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> when we got married, we actually felt bad taking the gifts. We're like, I don't know that this is going to go long enough for two waffle makers. <laughs> like one. OK, I can't have two on my conscience. <laughs> right. But, it, right. but it, it's nice to see you. Uh, it's, to see you. A, it's nice to be back in the presence of a rhino deep state sellout, <laughs> as some are calling you on the Internet right now. Yeah. Twitter's just a wonderful place. I always say it's like a fight club. Remember the movie Fight Club with Brad Pitt? Sure, yeah. Okay, Twitter is a fight club for people who don't want to get hit. Right. They, you just get in a digital fight. <laughs> right. Any hour of the day, though, you log in, you're like, all right, I got a right hook for you right here. Right. And it's a little bit of what we were talking about off the air. And what I find so fascinating about where we're at with this Mar-a-Lago raid is everything now is distilled as a binary choice. Now, starting there at 20,000 feet, is it not possible that both parties have a legitimate gripe here? And that Trump is raided, it's unprecedented in the history of our country, but at the same time, there is a legitimate custody issue with classified information. Is it possible both parties are slightly aggrieved? Yeah, that's, I mean, that is frequently the case, okay. and it's possible. Now, on this one, you know, I, I, still, I still don't see that the government did anything wrong okay. uh, here, if you really understand the facts. Uh, but I agree with you exactly that you know, people, it, it's very tribal, you know, and, and it's every binary, it's binary. It's mm. like, are you for or against? <laughs> and, it, and if there's any nuance, like, well, mm. this is what's right about their position on this, but this is, oh, you're on the other side. You're, you're, you're you know. <laughs> Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> I want to see know? this guy. <laughs> yeah. So it's very binary. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, what I don't like is, mm -hmm. is um, what we've always objected to on the left is they don't care about truth. Mm -hmm. They take the facts, they squeeze it into their narrative and the mm -hmm. truth suffers, right? Yes. And now I see our side doing a lot of that too. And the truth does matter. It, it, in some capacity, it would be nice <laughs> to get back to a world where I do, I do feel this is my biggest frustration is I feel like we're litigating feeling more than fact. Right. And I think that's the challenge right now because obviously with somebody like President Trump, it evokes a lot of emotion. Right. But I think the challenge a lot of people are having, and maybe you can speak to this, is there have been instances in the Justice Department where people in the FBI, one way for one reason or another, appeared to have admitted some level of bias when it came to things like Hunter Biden or the Mueller probe. So I think a lot of people have a problem buying their actions at face value. Now, is there any justification for that, would you say? 100 percent. OK. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think especially the stuff that happened under Comey and the Russiagate stuff yeah. has essentially uh, destroyed the, the credibility of the FBI with a huge segment of American mm -hmm. public. And so they're not given the benefit of the doubt. So I don't I understand the the skepticism about them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I also think that uh, there are things that they have done and screwed up and there's some actions that look partisan that they should be taken to task for. Mm -hmm. There are things that have to be fixed and overhauled in the FBI, no question about it. And, you know, I know a lot about that. I yeah, understand there's it. multiple issues that have to be addressed. And guess what? Mm -hmm. They're not going to be addressed under this administration, no. under this president and, and this attorney general. Mm -hmm. And if they drive out Chris Ray, I can guarantee you that the person who's going to replace him is not going to be better than Chris <laughs> Ray. OK, so all these people want to hang Chris Ray from the, you know. The yeah. high. And, and, and the other thing is this thing was not an uh, my point is this particular operation should not be put on late at the door of the FBI this decision was made at the Justice Department okay I was gonna ask you that totally made at the Justice mm -hmm. Department and I'm not saying it was a wrong decision I'm mm -hmm. just saying Chris Ray wasn't there pounding the table saying you know let's do a raid <laughs> you know it was the lawyer and it was carefully considered at the department mm -hmm. it was debated but it was mm -hmm. the DOJ legal team that made this decision and then the FBI carried it out so 
you know, but again, they take the situation and mm-hmm. a lot of Republicans got way over their skis, mm-hmm. you know, basically saying everyone has to be drawn and quartered at the FBI, you know, we're going to, you know, scorched earth, and, you know, and, <laughs> and using this as the example. Yeah, there's not a lot of moderation in no. our politics these days. No. But let me ask you this as a former attorney general. OK, is there a world where the current attorney general does any of this without the White House being consulted on it? Um. Let me just say, it is possible, because mm-hmm. I'll tell you what the, the debate I mean, it's possible was. I date Cindy Crawford. I don't no, no, know that it's no, going to... No, okay, here's the... Okay. De- I, personally, uh-huh. I think they probably gave someone a heads up. Okay. I don't think he talked to the president and said, okay. you know, is this okay? Uh-huh. Okay. I don't think that happened. He, I think he could have given... Someone at Justice may have given the White House counsel a heads up. Mm-hmm. But I know the debate that occurred, okay. which is, look, we don't want this to look political. Um and so if we call the White House to tell them mm-hmm. and give them a heads up, then we'll be asked if we talk to the White House. And the answer will be, yeah, it'll look no, political. That chain, yeah. But if we don't, these mm-hmm. guys are going to be entirely blind, blindsided. So, you know, I, I think they probably had that discussion. And my guess is someone got a heads up that this was going to happen. But I don't think they asked for permission. Okay. Uh, Attorney General, former Attorney General Bill Barr is uh, in studio. His book, One Damn Thing After Another. You leave uh, the administration and you get another damn thing. And right. here we are. Right. <laughs> it's one damn thing after. You can write a sequel now after another after another right. is the is the new print um right. let me ask you this because i also find this to be very interesting okay we have now uh we're getting a lot of hillary clinton's chiming in and i know you're a huge fan of her so i just want <laughs> <laughs> as they go i mean he's yeah. wearing an i'm with her t-shirt right now a lot of yeah. people don't see it uh but i know you're a big fan well, of on the HS. back it says lock her up <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mood ring. It depends on the mood. Right. Different mood, you change the ring. It doesn't matter. Um, but there's been a lot of comparisons drawn between her handling of classified information and the president's. Now, I think something I heard you say on our air earlier is it wouldn't matter whether cl- Trump had classified information that was declassified or not. The point is you're still not allowed to have it. Can we just start there? That's that's a basic principle, Right. Right. Documents, were, you know, that were prepared as part of government, mm-hmm. the government process and are part of the government's record, you know, mm-hmm. are, are uh, doing business as a government official mm-hmm. are government records. You are not allowed to take a record. So even if they're declassified, you can't like you don't take them home like it's a right okay, now, centerpiece at a wedding. And it might be possible to say, I want a copy of this document. I want a copy of that document okay. as long as they're not classified. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. So. Okay. So let me, a- let me ask you this, because one of the pushbacks is, is obviously, well, you know, her emails. And, you know, she is now out saying that she had no classified information. Um, can you speak to that? Did, what, what did the instant replay tell us when it came to her handling of classified information? So I can't get, you know, into details. But it's I just want us. People we'll turn off the mic. Yeah, Hold okay. on. Turn- <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, I want people to understand that she left – the State Department six years before I became Attorney General, okay. and the statute of limitations is five years. Okay. So, the the work on her stuff was done under the Obama administration, and it was the Obama Justice Department that initially came to the conclusion no laws were broken, et cetera. Mm-hmm. When when Trump was elected, then there were two years of sessions, and you know they were sort of looking over what was done to see, mm-hmm. you know, is this really true? And then I came in, and, and we did a little of that. T- I, I did that. I brought in some fresh eyes okay. and professionals look over stuff. Uh, and um, I think, I, to, to, to tell you the truth, uh, I think the, the, the level of the documents uh, in, in the Hillary situation, the ones we had, mm-hmm. uh, were not as raw Okay. As as being portrayed in news reports about what we still don't know exactly what yeah. Trump had. Well, I think that's my frustration is the portrayal of anything is come is being distilled by someone with a motivation. Right. And that's my frustration right now with the leaks. Like if sure. you think of something like the Durham probe, we don't get leaks out of the Durham right. probe. Zero. But this thing uh, is left and right. Okay. Right. And oftentimes a leak is coming by someone who's looking to sway public opinion. Yeah. They have an agenda. Yeah. So how is it, does that make it hard for you to buy into what we've heard so far in terms of nuclear secrets, our, our country, other countries? Cause there's been a shift last week. He was selling our nuclear codes. Like it was a Netflix password after a breakup yeah, this I, year. Maybe yeah. I, read into that. Well, I, I, you know, my, mm-hmm. my, and this is all speculation yeah. on my part. But first, I, I've said from the very beginning, people should stop speculating what mm-hmm. it is and wait to see what the evidence is on two things: how sensitive are the documents, and is there any inside evidence of 
obstruction that ties the president into deceit, mm-hmm. deceitful acts. Okay. We don't know. Yeah. That's those are the sixty four thousand and everyone's <laughs> anyway, out there spinning out I, all these. Can I just I just want to jump in. Okay. What? That's your crime right now though. In the court of public opinion, your crime is that you've said we don't know. <laughs> okay. And they're like, get this guy out of here. Like right. this rhino dirtbag, <laughs> deep state sellout. And all you're calling to is is for reason and restraint. Right. But it's, it's it's amazing because we're past that. Like nuance is gone, moderation is gone, right. critical thinking is gone. Right. It's all in. Right. And it's crazy though. What color jersey is the guy wearing? If <laughs> is that color, I'm for him. He can <laughs> he can go out and commit mass murder. Okay. This, well, listen, and- <laughs> this is the whole point of my show. Is the whole point of my show. I'm talking to former Attorney General Bill Barr. As I say every day. If we could get America to a place where people put country over party, which is an old-fashioned thing we used to do, you get through something like this. And you Mm -hmm. might come out of it for the better in that, yes, if somebody needed to be held accountable to the letter of the law, fine, as uncomfortable as that would be. But at the same time, we might also have interest in holding the FBI accountable. Because, again, on the left, they don't care if the FBI is violating any norm or precedent to get the guy because they just want the guy. Right. You know, and we're seeing that in journalism, too. Right. But I think the end game of that is, you know, as we were talking about the truth being a consequence of this, I think America is suffering. I think collectively, like the very team, much so. Yeah. You, you would say, right? Absolutely. Um, so let me throw this one at you then, because we're having this conversation about all things America. Um, you know, the big conversation right now about indicting Trump, obviously, is that it would be very reckless if he did have this level of document that we're speculating about. We don't know it to be true. But I wanted to ask you: Is there a world where it's almost more reckless to indict him, given the impact it would have on the country? Yeah, so I've, what I've been saying all along is there are two different questions. Mm-hmm. One is, does the government have enough evidence that they can indict mm-hmm. Joe Sixpack if yeah. Joe Sixpack did it, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, meet the standards uh, of the federal prosecution standards and say, we have enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt he violated the law. Mm-hmm. That's one question. Yeah. The next question is, assuming you have that evidence, mm-hmm. is it as an exercise of discretion, wise to pursue a particular case, yeah. uh, indictment. Mm-hmm. And I think that could be where they decide not to proceed because you, you and, 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 mm-hmm. and someone said this to me today, well, doesn't that mean uh, some pe- you know, to someone above the law? And I said, no, it's not that they're above the law, yeah. okay? It is that we take action in the interests of the country. And in some cases, going after a particular individual is not in the country's interest. Not because, you know, he's more important and he's yeah. above the law. It's just that in some cases the collateral effect of prosecution could hurt the public more than, you know, public interest is vindicated by the prosecution. Now, no, it's a, it's a great point because it brings me back to Hillary Clinton. I think maybe that was the internal calculation beyond the party. You know, they'd like to just say they were in the tank for her. But I mean, in some world, if you are legitimately prosecuting a major party candidate weeks before an election, I can't imagine uh, it's a peaceful, tranquil month of November here in America in 2016. No, right. right. So but, I, I, that's that's the delicate balance we're talking about. Right. But even after that, okay. Yeah. So even after the election, mm-hmm. uh, in one of my initial meetings with Trump, mm-hmm. he said to me, "You know." I know they were saying lock me, lock her up at stuff at the rallies, but he said, I actually don't think she should be prosecuted. Trump said that. Yes. Hmm. I could see that, yeah. And he said, uh, I, I think we would look like a banana republic. You know, mm-hmm. the losing candidate is put in prison. So even if she, even if, she, you know, there's a yeah. violation there, I don't think it's smart necessarily. Now, he may have changed his main mind the more people were piling on him about yeah. things. Mm-hmm. But I think, you know, that's a legitimate uh, mm-hmm. Position and the other thing you have to remember is, you know, once the Republicans came in, they, that would have meant reversing an mm-hmm. earlier decision yeah, on the yeah. prosecution. That also makes people feel that justice is just a yeah, political that, game. It depends yeah. who. Yeah, so. Well, and I think that's the frustration right now. Is I think if you're on the right, this looks wildly politically motivated. Mm-hmm. I think if you're on the left, you don't care. Because we've just got a, you know, we've got a guy we want to get somewhere in the middle lies the truth. So, you know, I find ourselves to be in quite the predicament. Last Bill Barr criticism I get a lot on Twitter. You can speak to this. Everybody tells me, uh, not they don't tell me, I just read it in the threads, the Hunter Biden laptop in the run-up to the election. Could you have done more with the laptop? Did you have it? I don't even know that what, what this amounts to. I just know when they're not calling you a rhino, they're like, Barr should have did something with the laptop. Well, number one, uh... The laptop was where it should have been, which was in the, which is 
the people investigating okay. mm-hmm. uh, Hunter Biden. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the what happened before the election is a letter came out with these intelligence experts saying it was Russian disinformation. Mm-hmm. And the, I talked to people about that. The mm-hmm. DNI went out and said, no, it wasn't disinformation. It was legit, yeah. And the FBI said they agreed with the DNI. There was no indication that this was disinformation. And we got that right out. Mm-hmm. That's all we could really do is try to correct yeah. that, that disinformation. Mm-hmm. But the idea that the Department of Justice can, can take a lap, you know, evidence mm-hmm. that's being investigated where no decision has been made yet yeah. – and put it out in the public domain. That's not how evidence works. Yeah, and and and, and uh, that's you know that would put make the Justice Department be able to affect elections just not by prosecute not yeah. by prosecuting people just by putting ev- Here it stuff is. out there. Yeah. Here it is. Now that happens. There are mm-hmm. leaks from the department, as mm-hmm. I said. Mm-hmm. By the way, there is a deep state. I think there is a double standard. Mm-hmm. There are partisan players in the department. Mm-hmm. Some of them are very conscious. Some are sort of unconscious that they allow their partisanship to mm-hmm. to affect Influence their decisions. Yeah, but they're there. Mm-hmm. And as I've said, there were leaks when I was there, and they were all anti-Republican, pro-Democrat mm-hmm. leaks. And the yeah. cases that would have been embarrassing to the Democrats were never leaked. Yep. So it's it. There it's is a, a double standard. It yeah. is definitely a thing. And and you know, you you say who's going to go and investigate this case? And it's a case involving Democrats. Mm-hmm. And you know, very few hands are raised. Okay. <laughs> you say there's a Republican over here we want to look at, and you know, three quarters of the department and raises their hand. It's a line a mile long. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last question. We're under a minute. Uh, Fifty years. You're going to be married 50 years. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll survive. Yeah, <laughs> Not after this interview. She might be upset. <laughs> she might be a deep stater. She didn't tell you. You don't know. You might be in big trouble. No. Uh, how, how rowdy do the bars get for 50 years? Do you go away? Do you low key? What's a guy like Bill Barr do? Uh, we, we do a little travel. We're okay. picking that up after the COVID thing. Nice. Uh, okay. we, we do we do go away, you All know. Right. I, I like shooting. Uh, oh, okay. You know, and uh, well, you're in a good neighborhood right now. If you like shooting, <laughs> I mean, most, most of it's self defense. But the point is, you'll get your reps in. Yeah, I play the bagpipes. I yeah, go of play course, the bagpipes, and I like hanging out with my grandchildren and so All forth. Right. So. Well, you know, on a radio budget, I'm taking my wife for a trip around the world. We're going to Epcot. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny, pack your bags. You don't need a yeah. passport. But yeah. we're, we're Just don't take her near the little pond with the alligators. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're trying to play some defense. The great Bill Barr. I appreciate your time today, my Thanks, man. Thanks, Jimmy. 